Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today's going to be pretty, oh, there we are. Today's going to be pretty brief, I think, anyway, unless I digress too much. We've been uh, talking o over the last uh, a few days about uh, the difference between uh, the adherence to a magical formula or the or the, the magicians working the magical formula of an aeon, and uh, the difference between the, the adherents, which are actually uh, manifesting the, the formula of the aeon in the world, and drawing a distinction between just the adherents of the formula and the adepts of the formula. And uh, I thought today we would read one of the, the holy books of uh, Thelema, Liber 10, uh, Porta Lucas, or the G Gate of Light, which Crowley, uh, uh, it, it's a class A document. In other words, it was written through Crowley and not by him. And so, uh, uh, it sort of stands as it is as a, as a mystical uh, uh, document and uh, Crowley doesn't go to any great lengths to try to uh, interpret it for uh, for others and we should probably allow each other to do the to do the same uh, here's a, a couple things I'm going to read it out of the, the text, uh, the Holy Books of Thelema, which has all 13 of these Class A documents in it. Uh, Liber Porta Lucas, this book is an account of the sending forth of the Master by the AA and an explanation of his mission. The book is called The Gate of Light. It explains how those who have attained initiation, taking pity on the darkness and minuteness of the earth, send forth a messenger to men. The message follows. It is an appeal to those who, being developed beyond the average of their fellows, see fit to take up the great work. This work is then described in general terms with a few hints of its conditions. These are Crowley's comments on, uh, on what the book is uh, about. And the title, Porta Lucas, uh, The Gate of Light, is one of the titles of Malkuth, the number 10. That's why it's Liber 10. With that uh, uh, introduction in Crowley's own comments. Without further comment and without further ado, I present to you on Saturday morning, Liber Porta Lucas Sub Figura 10. I behold a small dark orb wheeling in an abyss of infinite space. It is minute among the myriad vast ones, dark amid a myriad, a myriad bright ones. I who comprehend in myself all the vast and the minute, all the bright and the dark, have mitigated the brilliance of mine unutterable splendor, sending forth V, 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 as a ray of my light, as a messenger unto that small dark orb. Then V, 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 V taketh up the word and saith, Men and women of earth, to you I am come from the ages beyond ages, from the space beyond your vision, and I bring to you these words. But they heard him not. 
for they were not ready to receive them. But certain men heard and understood, and through them this knowledge shall be made known. The least, therefore, of them, the servant of them all, writeth this book. He writeth for them that are ready. Thus it is known, if one be ready, if he be endowed with certain gifts, if he be fitted by birth, or by wealth, or by intelligence, or by some other manifest sign. And the servants of the master, by his insight, shall judge of these. This knowledge is not for all men. Few indeed are called, but of these few, Many are chosen. This is the nature of the work. Excuse me for a moment. First, there are many and diverse conditions of life upon this earth. In all of these is some seed of sorrow. Who can escape from sickness? and from old age and from death. We are come to save our fellows from these things. For there is a life intense with knowledge and extreme bliss, which is untouched by any of them. To this life we attain even here and now. The adepts, the servants of VVVVV, have attained thereunto. It is impossible to tell you of the splendors of that to which they have attained. Little by little, as your eyes grow stronger, will we unveil to you the ineffable glory of the path of the adepts and its nameless goal. Even as a man ascending a steep mountain is lost to the sight of his friends in the valley, so must the adept seem. They shall say, he is lost in the clouds, but he shall rejoice in the sunlight above them and come to the eternal snows. Or as a scholar may learn some secret language of the ancients, his friends shall say, look, he pretends to read this book, but it is unintelligible. It is nonsense. Yet he delights in the Odyssey. While they read vain and vulgar things. We shall bring you to absolute truth, absolute light, absolute bliss. Many adepts throughout the ages have sought to do this, but their words have been perverted by their successors. And again and again the veil has fallen upon the Holy of Holies. To you who yet wander in the court of the profane, we cannot yet reveal all. But you will easily understand that the religions of the world are but symbols and veils of the absolute truth. So are the philosophies. To the adept seeing all these things from above, there seems nothing to choose between Buddha and Muhammad, between atheism and theism. The many change and pass, the one remains. Even as wood and coal and iron burn up together in one great flame, if only that furnace be of transcendent heat, so in the alembic of this spiritual alchemy, if only the zealoter blow sufficiently upon his furnace, all the systems of earth are consumed in the one knowledge. 
Nevertheless, as a fire cannot be started with iron alone, in the beginning, one system may be suited for one seeker, another for another. We, therefore, who are without the chains of ignorance, look closely into the heart of the seeker and lead him by the path which is best suited to his nature and to the ultimate end of all things, the supreme realization, the life which abideth in the light, yea, the life which abideth in the light. Wasn't that a sweet little book? That was Liber 10, Port Lucas, Class A document, channeled through Crowley in around 1907, I believe. But anyway. That's it for today. It's a short class. I'm sure you're relieved. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow will be Sunday school. I hope we uh, have something fun to do for Super Bowl Sunday. Last week, the, or last year, the oracular chicken picked the winner. But she says she doesn't want to do that But uh, this year. But... Do you, oracular chicken? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love's the law, love under will.